Welcome to the fourth episode of How to Think Script. We are TOSindicators.com, home of the volatility box. Using the volatility box this past week, our profits were just over five grand in our small account. We document each and every one of our trades on our YouTube channel, so go ahead and take a look if you'd like to learn more. If you'd like to start trading with an edge, at the edge, then go ahead and download the volatility box at TOSindicators.com slash volatility box. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to spot supply and demand imbalances in the marketplace. Before we get started, we should take a step back and go over certain terms. So the first thing is the idea that the stock market is really just one big marketplace. If we have that in mind, the rest becomes a little bit easier and more straightforward. In this marketplace, we have buyers and we have sellers, and our job is to determine whether or not uh, this is a buyer's market or a seller's market and how we take advantage of such. To do that, we need to be able to easily measure supply and demand. How do we do that? Well, I like to use two tools that come uh, built in into TOS, which is the advanced decline spread along with the NYSE tick. Each of these serves a specific function that we're going to go over. The advanced decline spread helps you figure out how many stocks are going up versus down. So what you would expect in a normal market is as the stock market is making new lows, uh, more and more stocks are continuing to decrease. This would make sense and that's why it would explain that the market is going down. But now what happens in a scenario where say the stock market is making new lows, but um, the number of stocks say going down has actually dwindled or has started to increase even? Well, that's a divergence and a divergence that we can take advantage of. The same concept applies with the NYSE tick. The tick helps us measure how much buying or selling pressure there is and how strong that pressure is. And so in a normal market, what we, what we would expect is as the market makes new lows, we would expect the selling pressure to continue to increase uh, and bring the market down even further. But now what happens if instead of decreasing as the stock market is making new lows, that selling pressure has actually started to stop or maybe buying pressure has actually come in and is coming in fairly strong? Well, once again, that's a divergence that we could take advantage of. Typically, each of these are so minute that it's impossible for our naked eye, or at least for us, to be able to continuously manage this on a wide variety of symbols. We're going to build an indicator today that helps us take advantage of that uh, and trade uh, in a smarter, easier fashion where we've outsourced more of the heavy lifting to think or swim. With that, let's dive straight into the charts and actually start building this indicator. If you'd like to skip the tutorial, you can, of course, download the code for free on our website, and the link is in the description box below. If you'd like to actually build this indicator, then stick around and we're going to do just that. Let's get started. Uh, so first, we'll create a new study by clicking the studies icon in the top right hand corner. Uh, and with that, we'll click create new study. We'll give the study a name. We'll call it uh, supply demand edge. Um, OK, now we can actually get started with writing some code. Let's start by defining the high of the day. Uh, and to do this, we need to first check if uh, we are in the same day itself. And then we need to check if we've actually made a new high compared to our previous high, or if um, say a previous candle had a higher price than the current price. To do that, we'll say def high of day. We'll say if it's equal to the same day, then, and then we'll add in one more condition to see if it's a new high. Um, then we'll say return the high if it's a new high, otherwise return the previous high, otherwise it's the first candle and we have a brand new high of the day. Now we'll repeat the same thing, but for the low of the day, so just copy and paste that and we'll come in here, we'll change this to low of day. This first part of the logic is the same and the second part will change from high to say low uh, and we'll see if this is less than or equal to the low of the day um, from the previous bar. Uh, if this is true, then we'll say hey, we have a new low, and otherwise use the previous low. And if neither are true, then we're on the first bar, and that by definition is the low of the day. Now, we want to copy and paste the same exact code, um, but we want to do that uh, with the advanced decline spread along with the tick. Um, and this way we have the high and low of the day in terms of price, the high and low of the day in terms of the advanced decline spread, and the high and low of the day in terms of the NYSE tick. Okay, so let's Go ahead and copy paste this back in. We'll come in here and we'll change this to say the high advanced decline spread and we'll make this the low advanced decline spread. Okay, so now let's come in and actually change this code up. So 
we'd first like to make sure once again if we are in the same high um, if we're in the same day rather uh, and then if we are we'd like to get the high but this time we need to clarify that it's for the symbol ADSPD and not the symbol that we're currently on the stock chart in and if this is true um, and if this is greater than say the uh, previous high advanced decline line then we know that um, we need to get uh, return this high and so we'll copy paste that in and if this is not true then we need to return the previous advanced decline number uh, and if that is also not true then once again we return the very first one and so with some copy and pasting this should go by uh, much quicker and so we'll actually just copy paste this in and we'll change this here and we'll make this low and anywhere where we say high ad here we'll just copy paste in the low ad um, because we're really just switching everything around uh, and once again we'll turn these signs around um, and we'll change this to low and low and that should be that and now we repeat this one more time but this time for the tick and so we can copy paste in the advanced decline line and this time it should be super simple um, because all we do is we change the ad to say tick we change this to say tick and make sure we copy paste in the right values um, in the two different areas and once that's happened we need to change the actual symbol that it uh, fetches the price for and this time we're going to look at the tick instead of the advanced decline spread okay perfect uh, and finally we'd like to define the current high um, and the current low of both the advanced and decline spread so we have something to compare the previous high values to and so the way we'll do that is we'll just say def current high ad and we'll say this is equal to the high and once again the symbol is the advanced decline spread whoops and we'll repeat this process for the low along with the tick uh, two tick values and so we'll say we'll paste it four times change this to say low and change this to say low um, and then we can also just change the lows and then this way we just come in and swap out the tick and we're good to go and so we rename the actual variable names to say tick uh, okay we'll ignore the formatting for the time being um, and we'll change this guy and this guy okay so now what we currently have let's recap we have the high of the day we have the low of the day captured we also have the highest and lowest values of the advanced decline spread captured we also have the highest and lowest values of the ticks captured um, and now we also have the current values the current high and the current low of uh, both the advanced decline spread and the tick now let's bring this home by combining everything together once again let's keep in mind the idea of this symbol it's uh, or this indicator it's meant to be simple but we want to outsource all the heavy lifting to think or swim to spot these divergences that we talked about earlier and alert us whenever these divergences are true so let's first start by plotting the advanced decline divergences or any divergences related to um, the amount of stocks moving up versus down so we'll say plot ad short signal and we're plotting this because we actually want this to be displayed either with an arrow or something of that sort and so we'll say if um, the high is equal to the high of the day and our current high ad is less than the high ad then we know that this is a short because now we're making new highs but the amount of stocks going up um, are either dwindling or decreasing but we don't we're not making new highs in that case either and if this is true we'll return yes otherwise we'll return a zero which is false now once again we'll copy paste this in and we'll reverse this for the long signals and so if we think about it the logic should be the exact opposite so <coughs> here if we have if it's the low is equal to the low of the day so we were making a new lower we're at the low of the day and our current uh, low AD is greater than the existing AD spread then we also know that um, stocks or the, the markets going down or the particular stock is going down but the overall advanced decline line is actually not making new lows anymore and therefore we know that there's a divergence happening now let's repeat this for the ticks so the same exact concept we'll come in here we'll change the first words to say tick and tick here as well
And here we'll change this to say current high tick, current low tick, uh, and once again, high tick and low tick. So now we have our actual signals. We need to figure out a way to plot them or a clean way that we'd like these um, uh, d uh, divergences to plot. And the way I like to do that is with an arrow. So we need to define the painting strategy for each one of these um, four signals that we've created. And so for the AD long signal, we'll do set painting strategy and we'll make this a Boolean arrow up. And we'll do the same for the tick. And now for our um, short signals, we'll make them Boolean shorts uh, or Boolean arrow down. So we'll say short tick short signal. And we'd like to change the arrow to actually be triggering down so we know that we should be shorting. Um, and we can go ahead and just uh, pretty this up a little bit and uh, give it a weight. So we'll say um, AD, oops, AD short signal dot set line weight. And we'll make it three so it stands out. And we'll copy paste this now four times. And we can just uh, come in here and replace these variable names so that we have chosen the right signal. And the reason why we build this into the code as opposed to doing it from the study screen is so that we do it once, but we don't ever have to actually do it again. Whoops, oh, I got the wrong one. Tick, short signal. Okay, perfect. So now we have um, both our up and down arrows. We have their assigned weights. Um, we could give them a color as well if we'd like, just so we know the difference between the advanced decline line uh, along with uh, the ticks. And so we want all of those arrows to be one color, both the advanced decline line um, and the tick should have its own respective colors, not green and red, but rather, let's just say, all the advanced decline arrows um, or divergences show up as, um, let's say, a green arrow and all the tick divergences show up as a cyan arrow. And this way we just know what it's attributed to. Okay, so we come in here and we'll just copy paste this in once more and we'll say set default color and we'll make this color dot green um, and we can do the same with the short signal. And so this way they're both. So anytime we have a divergence related to advanced decline, it'll now show up as green and we'll do the same, but with the ticks <clears throat> and we'll make the tick cyan. And so this time we can even spot what the divergence is related to. And what you'll notice as you look at more and more charts with this is the advanced decline tends to be a little bit more accurate than, than the ticks. Um, and so one thing that I have uh, like to do is I like to add the ability for me to determine if I really care to see both arrows um, or if I just say want to see only tick arrows or only see advanced decline arrows, which is really uh, more of the time the condition that's true than not. So the way uh, we can do that by letting the user do it from the screen instead of having to come in and manually comment out code is by creating a user parameter for it. So we'll say input show tick signal and we can make this a default yes. And we'll also add in one that says show a D signal <coughs> and we can make this yes as well. By default, when we set this equal to yes, thinkorswim will give the user uh, either the choice of yes or no. So it automatically adds in the no. So we don't need to um, worry about that. What we do need to do is add in this condition here that says we need this to be yes, so we need the user to have selected show AD signal um, in order for us to actually plot this. And we can come in here, copy paste this in once again, and we do the same with our ticks so that this time we know that, hey, the user has actually cared enough to see our tick signal. Um, and then we'll go ahead and plot these arrows. Okay, so let's give this a go and uh, test whether or not this works. So we click OK, uh, and we'll start by applying it uh, to um, our futures charts. And so we need to turn off the extended hours here because uh, the tick and the advanced decline spread are only on during market hours. And so you won't, uh, it'll give you an error if you try to uh, have it work with uh, future or extended hours as well. OK, so looking at the charts, um, and we'll start with uh, the ES, and we'll go through a bunch of charts just so we can see a few different examples. 
um, we see, and this works extremely well with the volatility box, but we see right here, we started to get our divergence arrows, and then we slammed into our volatility box, which gave us an actual entry for this um, ticker. And we saw that we had divergences stacking up, our AD divergences were blowing up, and boom, we had this huge puke. Once again here, we had divergences stacking up, divergences stacking up, and we had a huge puke. Uh, let's try the Dow as well. And so if we kind of just look at all of the different uh, entries or the signals that have uh, taken place. So we had our tick signal in the morning that told us to get long. We started getting AD divergences, started to get closer and closer into the volatility box. And then we had our straight puke down. <coughs> Once again here, we had our pukes down. We had reactions from each of these divergences, which is really what you want to look for. The follow through is dependent on um, the strength of each divergence. And the more and more you study this, you'll be able to identify which um, divergences are strong versus which are false signals. And so, for example, if we come in here and we look at um, Friday's activity, what you'll notice is the follow through was not really all that strong from any of the divergence arrows. Although we did have follow throughs, um, nothing particularly to write home about. And why is that? Well, we knew on Friday the strength of the market was there. We had gapped up and we just continued to rise up. And so these divergences helped us find scalps versus on different days, we saw that the divergences were amazing trades just on their own, especially used in confluence with the volatility box. Let's try testing this out on some stock tickers. So if we come in, let's type in Microsoft. <coughs> And you can actually change, uh, you can change the time frames as well. And so sometimes what you'll notice is if you go out to say a 15 minute time frame, uh, there'll be less noise, less triggers, but also less noise. Uh, and so looking at a 15 minute chart of Microsoft here, we see we had divergence arrows and then we had a puke. We had divergence arrows, we had a puke. We had a tick arrow and we shot up. We had tick arrows and we shot up. Um, here we had a false tick arrow, did not work. Um, but divergence arrows worked like a charm. Okay, let's test this out on one more stock. Uh, so let's go to Netflix, which has some weighting, but not as strong a weighting as, um, let's say, Microsoft has. Let's see if it still worked effectively on that. Okay, so going through, uh, we see we had our tick arrow divergence, which was a, fa a false signal. But then we had our advanced decline line divergence, um, which actually gave us a much better entry than the tick signal. Um, then we had our advanced decline divergence to give us a signal to go long here, had a nice little uh, move up. Um, then we had our next day open, false signals, false signals are a little too early, but then we did end up shooting up. Then we had our divergence arrows telling us to go short, and we had massive follow through here. Um, and so what you, what you kind of notice here is you need to be able to use this in conjunction with one or two other tools that really give you an edge. And then you can start to treat this as a, 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 an assistant to your reversion to the mean strategies. So for example, you might have a moving average here and it might, you might actually be looking for this divergence to say, bring you back to the mean before you continue in your trend. These are all things to observe and notice. I'll let you play around with this indicator some more. I'm curious if you find anything exciting or useful, please go ahead and share it with us. You can either email us, comment, um, whatever you find convenient. But really, the more brains we get in this together, um, the more we can figure out how we can take advantage of these supply and demand imbalances and take advantage of them for profitable trades. Thanks for watching the fourth episode of How to Think Script. Use the link in the description box to download the indicator and this code for free. As usual, if you have any other indicators that you're looking to build, feel free to comment below uh, and we'll do our best to take requests as they come. Thanks and see you next time. Thanks and see you next time.